name is Josh Mealy. I'm a researcher at Smith Kettlewell. I'm here with Megan Lawrence, who's a postdoc here um, in our lab. At, um, and we've basically been working on a bunch of um, uh, geographical and wayfinding tools. Um, Megan came from the University of Oregon, was working with Amy Lobin. Lobin um, and uh, we've, at Smith Kettlewell, we've done a bunch of geographical um, accessibility work and um, wayfinding tools. One of them uh, was TMAP, where we developed a, um, a way, f a, a, um, what we would now call cloud-based, what we used to call the internet, um, uh, a, uh, but basically a website where people could go and <coughs> download a tactile map of any place they, um, any place they wanted that was formatted uh, for tactile presentation and, and with Braille labels and stuff like that. We also did audio tactile representations. Anyway, um, we have a long history of sort of doing geographical and, um, and wayfinding accessibility. One of the other things that we've done here at Smith Kettlewell that was um, uh, led by um, uh, a number of, of um, it sort of was, was enabled by a number of innovations here in the 70s and 80s and was, was worked on by a number of people, including Bill Crandall, um, and was then later uh, heavily researched by people like Jim Marston, and, um, and Jack Loomis and Reg Dolich and, and the, all of the smart people at UC Santa Barbara, the idea of um, using talking signs. Talking signs are infrared, um, a system of infrared transmitters and receivers that, um, that basically the transmitter is, is somewhere in the built environment and um, sends an infrared signal and um, the receiver is held by the user and the, the um, the message is um, primarily audio, although you can embed digital information in it as well. And we've um, done some cool stuff where we embed ID tags and then can link to uh, web content from that. But the, the bottom line is that you've got a receiver that you can point in different directions in the environment and get real-time information about what you're pointing at. And by real-time, I mean um, down to the millisecond, because what you're doing is you're pointing it in different directions as you point it at a particular sign, you hear the message. As you point away from it, you get um, uh, some static because the, um, the reception cone is being occluded, and then you move outside of the, of the reception cone and you don't hear it anymore. So it's a totally directional, totally refusable accommodation. It's, um, it is one of the only um, mobile tools for really direct orientation information about the things that are in the environment around you. Um, it has been researched very heavily as a, um, uh, um, on a sort of usability level and, about, um, in, and in terms of how much information it provides for the user. And all research shows that it is an extraordinarily effective tool for helping blind and visually impaired people build cognitive maps of the environment. And um, it is also, um, a uh, very useful tool because it um, it allows uh, it allows people to um, to as I said as I said earlier basically you can point in a direction and hear the message you point away from that direction and you don't hear the message anymore so it's it gives you very exact information about where the messages are in the environment around you so they're used for labeling they're used for labeling things like um, uh, buildings, uh, building entrances, restaurants. You can use them indoors or outdoors. They can be used to label men's rooms, uh, women's rooms, uh, well, any kind of bathroom, really. Um, uh, you can uh, label offices. This building, in fact, has uh, a large number of talking signs installed in it. Um, so the, um, the general term, by the way, for talking signs is uh, RIOS, um, uh, Remote Infrared Audible Signage. And um, the message that I want you to take away from what I'm saying is that the interface for RIOS has been heavily researched and shown to be extraordinarily effective for wayfinding. I'm going to jump in quick, Josh. Yep. Just so I'm not standing here for the awkward. Yeah, I really okay, sorry. Do <laughs> sorry. Um, but I think one of the other aspects of, of talking science with RIOS that's incredibly important, um, which was some research findings that came from College of Marston, is that it significantly reduces travel anxiety and stress. Um, so this idea of not being able to find something in the environment, you know, it's an incredibly stressful event and keeps people from dying <coughs> on public transportation. So they did a, an extensive public transportation research study. So I 
just want to interject that it not only helps you build a better cognitive map of the environment, but by doing that, it also reduces the stress and anxiety that comes along with not knowing what's in the environment and how to locate it. Okay. So, Megan, we're, we're a team. We just sort of jump in on each other like that. So, um, so the um, the other uh, the other thing that I think um, we want to point out is that um, by having this haptic interface to the to the information, by being able to point directly at the information um, and get um, get very um, highly accurate. Um, and, and moment to moment information about which direction you're pointing at. Um, the need for, um, for directional language is vastly reduced. So there's much less need for saying such and such on the left at 12 o'clock, such and such at, three, you know, at 300 feet. So all of this, um, all of this uh, sort of cognitive overhead associated with, um, with uh, spatial language is really reduced. All you need to hear is the message of what the thing is, and you're getting the information about which direction it is. Maybe the um, information about how far away it is is a little bit less obvious, but you can also get that from, um, from qualities of the, the audio signal based on how staticky it is at the, at the center. So, um, so why aren't talking signs everywhere? Um, if it's so great, how come we're not using it everywhere? And the answer is um, that it's not just about how great it is for blind people, it's about how great it is for, um, for those who would need to install, uh, maintain, and pay for the systems. There's, um, so so there, there's, logistical, um, there's logistical and infrastructural overhead for installing things that, um, that need to go into public places, need to go um, or have visual impact on the environment and, um, and that frankly people don't understand and can't necessarily wrap their minds around the need for this kind of wayfinding accommodation and so they, um, they aren't really willing to pay for it and it's not free. Um, the other issue is uh, how do people get the receivers? The receivers are um, uh, fairly simple devices, but they need to be distributed to people somehow, and then it's something that you need to carry with you. So there's um, there's a bunch of there are a bunch of sort of little gotchas that that sort of combine to make talking signs um, sort of while extraordinarily effective and useful, um, keep keep them from being generally ex uh, generally used and widely available in the built environment and in society. Um, that's unfortunate because they really are so great. Now, um, what have we done? What have we done? Um, what what uh, the RERC and um, our team has done here at Smith Kettlewell is to um, to say, well, what if you don't need to install the talking signs? What if you could just use an iPhone as your talking sign receiver? Well. Um, we realized that basically, um, based on um, sensor fusion, we really could simulate virtual talking signs in the environment, in, um, especially in outdoor environments, because that's where GPS is nice and accurate. As, um, as indoor wayfinding uh, becomes um, more and more <coughs> accurate, as the technologies for, um, for indoor location uh, sensing improve, we think that we will be able to um, do the same kind of talking sign simulation indoors as well. Um, so the idea is basically if you know where you are using GPS and you know where you're pointing based on um, first a, uh, a magnetometer reading because that's, um, uh, that's fairly, fairly accurate especially if you integrate over a long period and then um, uh, synchronize your, um, your uh, gyroscope based on your magnetometer calibration, um, you can get very, uh, because the, sorry, um, um, let me step back for a second. Um, the magnetometer is slow, but accurate. The, um, the uh, uh, gyroscope has very fast response, but drifts. So um, the sensor fusion that we've done is to basically periodically calibrate the, um, 
the gyroscope off of the magnetometer so that we can get very rapid real-time um, motion response based on which direction you're pointing the phone, but so that it remains relatively accurate based on the magnetometer reading. Um, and then um, if you know where you are based on GPS, then you know what signs you're pointing at and what they should say. Those signs will be um, our cloud-based and um, basically what the model that we've got right now that I'll demonstrate for you is, um, is uh, pulling, um, pulling audio clips and uh, location information from a Dropbox folder, but we could easily set it up so that it is a, a database interface um, that would uh, allow crowdsourcing. And Megan, maybe you can talk a little bit about the, the crowdsourcing implications of it. Um, okay. Let's jump to the demo, and then we can talk about okay. like, what it means to actually build a crowdsourced view of So, um, give me a second. So, part of, I, part of what happened when we were developing this project was a realization that in order for something like Hockey Science to be really powerful, we needed a geodatabase that existed and was filled with the types of disability travel repeated data that we wanted. Uh, and, and, you know, not to talk about too much what, what we're doing when we are developing a project that, that's looking at OpenStreetMap, which is a cloud-based open source geographic information system, as a mechanism for us to embed these travel-related uh, geographic information. Uh, they could ultimately be fed into something like Talking Science. Okay, Talking Science. Is the, um, let's see, can I plug this in? Yeah. So I want to, um, I want to mention that uh, this is, um, we're inside, obviously. So the GPS is not very accurate. We're going to be hearing signs that are outside in the, in the environment. So basically, as I rotate my phone, we might need a little bit more volume. Alta Plaza Park. Okay. Alta, Alta so Plaza hear? Park. Alta Plaza Park. So that was one sign. It said Alta Plaza Park, and as I as I rotate towards it, we hear the we hear the static. So that's when I get it as I get to the Alta middle. Plaza Park. Alta Plaza that Park. That ticking sound is Alta an Plaza indication Park. that the GPS signal Alta Plaza that Park. basically the error on Alta my GPS Plaza Park. is too Alta big Plaza to, Park. to really rely Alta on the accuracy Plaza of this location information. Alta Plaza if I rotate Park. away from it, I don't hear it anymore. So that's. That gave me a cone of about um, 20 degrees of total signal with about three degrees of nice. New notification from messages. Twitter. A TV. Sorry. <laughs> Stop tweeting again. So, um, so, uh, so the, um, uh, so that is that is basically how it works. So there can be. I'll, let me see if I can. Uh, Fillmore Street and Clay Street, four-way stop. So that's another sign. Fillmore Street direction. and Clay Street, four-way stop. And it's actually fairly, Fillmore fairly Street. Okay. So Alta gonna, that's that's essentially how it works. If it were outside, it would be more accurate, and um, if we had more signs in the environment, it would be um, more interesting. I want you to realize that I am not proposing necessarily that um, that this is the way that. Uh, information that, that people, everybody needs to run out and get my, get our, um, you know, virtual talking signs app. What I am suggesting, though, is that in presenting, um, now a number, uh, Mike, um, uh, Mike's latest uh, app provides very, a very similar function, and so does the, um, so does the um, nearby explorer from APH. It provides the ability to point your phone in different directions and hear what's in that direction. What it doesn't give you is real-time feedback about exactly where that thing is. Because it's using text-to-speech, um, it's going through the operating system pre to present text, which then goes through the text-to-speech engine. By the time you actually hear the thing that it's telling you about, you could be 20 degrees or 30 degrees off of where you think it might be. Um, so we're, we're really advocating two things here. One is the ability to mark very specific locations in a crowdsourced way. Um, this kind of thing could be great for uh, campuses or, um, or uh, labeling uh, street environments, parks, that sort of thing, public, um, 
public parks, that those, those sorts of outdoor areas, and as I said, with indoor navigation improving, we'll see, um, we'll see how that uh, shapes up. But what I am really advocating for strongly is the need for um, real-time haptic, audio haptic feedback in presenting um, directional information so that you can minimize the amount of cognitive overhead associated with directional language and provide very specific directional information based on uh, the haptic feedback of where you're pointing. Megan, do you want to add uh, anything? I think we're out of time, yeah. All right. <laughs> hey. uh, nice work. I, uh, yeah, I can't agree more with the point of the No, sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. 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 i the gyro and magnetometer, when you're inside, sufficient to get yaw information for pointing? Because we, we play with this a lot for spatialized audio, and we've just gotten so much drift, especially when inside, because there's so much interference from the magnetometer, you just get a huge amount of air when moving the phone around. Is that something that you've dealt so with? So I, I didn't mention the other part, which is the um, the calibration. The calibration of the, so it, it uses the, um, it also checks the, um, what's that jiggly thing called? The accelerometer. <laughs> it checks the accelerometer and doesn't update the, and doesn't calibrate the gyro until the phone is sitting still. So in order to calibrate, so basically when the phone isn't moving, it says, okay, let me take a bunch of, let me, let me integrate the magnetometer to get a, a decent magnetometer reading and then let me update the uh, the gyro. So it's it, it really is sort of everybody is playing together. Um, so if you're if you're constantly doing jumping jacks, um, it won't really update as quickly, and you may get more drift. All right, we have time for one more question, and then we have coffee break. Gordon, I'll be right there with the microphone. Um, thanks, Josh. Very nice uh, in implementing the directionality. But what about distance? I didn't hear any distance information in the demo. Um, there is no distance information. The um, the uh, so what we've done in the in the data associated with each audio tag, we've actually provided a um, a bunch of different um, a bunch of metadata that tells the sign tells the phone how to treat. The sign. So the sign can be um, a 360 degree transmitter, so it can transmit in all directions, so you can see it from everywhere, or it could be, um, uh, it could only transmit in one particular direction with a, with a particular transmission cone. It also has an attenuation characteristic, so um, signs can be set up so that you can only see them from a particular, from within a particular radius. Um, so for example, uh, you know, you may want to see a restaurant from um, only a hundred feet away, but you may want to see a sign for Coit Tower from a mile away. Um, uh, that's the type. The other thing, as I mentioned, the ticking of the uh, of the the that you heard during the transmitter, where it was going, t -t -t -t, that is that basically says the error of the GPS, the the estimated um, you know error radius is bigger than one third of the estimated distance to the target. So um, so that's just a little signal to let you know, hey, you're. You're either really close, or you've got really bad GPS reception. Um, so that's another distance cue. All right, well, thank you very much, Josh and Megan. Thank you.